Amen. Good's an understatement when we're talking about God, ain't it? I looked there beside of me a minute ago, three-year-old girl sitting there with a Bible in her lap, looking through it. She had the beginning, she had the end, had everything in between, had the God to my life and yours, all power, had everything that has been and will be Amen. right there in her lap just flipping through it. Lord have mercy. Have you done what you need to do today? How many of you feel good about what you've done so far? Satisfied. God help us this morning. If you didn't hear Tanner's lesson, very sobering. God is just. He's holy. And thank God for the cross. Amen. We'd be in bad trouble, Tanner. Had it not been for the cross, Jesus dying on the cross, dug and taking every sin that I have committed and will commit, well, I'd be a pitiful shape. Hmm. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 12, give me a few minutes this morning. Uh, I'll try not to keep you too long. I asked Kelly what time it is. She said 5 to 12. So we'll just have to let the Methodists eat first today. <laughs> we'll eat when they're done. Or the Pentecostals are eating. We were the Pentecostals, they'll be still in church when we leave here, won't they? And sometimes I'm glad I'm a part of a Baptist church. <laughs> Smile at me. Romans chapter 12. Stand up and stretch your feet for a few minutes. We'll look through the first, maybe the first two verses, then we'll finish Wednesday night. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, raise your hand, brethren, save Christian people, by the mercies of God, that ye, you, present your bodies. How many of you have a body? Do you know that's a temple of the Holy Ghost? This body that you're walking around in and carrying, you ought to treat it like it's a temple of the Holy Ghost. That's where the Spirit of God lives inside of me today. Amen. Listen, your body's a living sacrifice. How many of you are alive? Listen to this word. It scares people to death today. Holy Holy, holy. That scares you. Right when you hear the word, immediately throw up a guard and say, I can't do that. Amen. Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Listen to this. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. How many of you have a mind? that ye may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Lord, we love You this morning. Thank You for Your anointing. Thank You for the service, God, and what's already happened. But Lord, we pray for a few minutes. God, that You just move in Your Word and God, help us. Lord, we need help so bad. And Lord, just move in this service. God, if there'd be a lost person, Lord, I pray You'd save them. But Lord, I pray for the Christians. That's not what they ought to be, and or don't know how to be what they ought to be. Lord, you'd help us this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. You can sit down. Let's look at these verses for just a few minutes. We'll go home. I beseech ye, brethren, beseech you, brethren. You know what he's saying right there? He's saying, I'm begging you, I'm begging you, I'm begging you, Denise, I'm begging you, please. I'm begging you to do this. Uh, Brown, if I call you and say, Brown, would you or can you? Uh, that's one thing. But if I call you and say, Brown, I need you to do this. I'm begging you to do this. I, you've got to do this. I need you to do it. Immediately, I feel like Brown's going to say, okay. Uh, if I call and say, can you do this? He'll say, I don't know. Tell me what it is. But if I say, I've got to have you to do this. What are you going to say? I hope you're going to say, okay. Amen. He's saying, I'm begging you, church. I'm begging you. 
I'm asking you to please do this. Listen to what he said right here. He said, by the mercies of God, which is the only way that you can do anything is by God's mercy. By the mercy from heaven this morning is the only way, Brown, that this old sinful flesh, this old sinful mind, this old sinful lips and body can do anything is by God's mercy. But listen, by the mercies of God that ye present your bodies. How many of you have a body? Raise your hand again. That's living. God does not want anything dead this morning. He doesn't want a dead church. He doesn't want a dead Christian. He doesn't want somebody that's dead and trespasses his sin and sins to serve him. He wants to save them. Amen. Listen, he's talking about service. A living sacrifice. Now that scares me to death about sacrifice. How many of you are willing to be a living sacrifice this morning? Anybody? But I'm begging you. Uh, the Bible's begging you, Doug. It's begging. It's saying, Doug, please be a living sacrifice this morning. He's, he's crying out saying, I need you to be a living sacrifice. But listen to me. If you love something enough, brother, if you love something enough, you will sacrifice for it. Am I right? If you don't believe me, listen to this. Now, the deer season opened last Saturday. I love to deer hunt, Right? So every morning and every evening and some days, Justin, from before daylight to 11 o'clock, I would come out, eat a little bit of lunch, go right back in and sit. Some days, 10, 12 hours of sitting in an uncomfortable seat in a place that I didn't want to be in hopes that something that probably wasn't coming would come by me. Now you've got to love to sacrifice. I got out of a warm bed with my wife. I skipped meals. I left whatever was behind me and I went. And when I wasn't in the woods hunting I was carrying corn I'm a heart patient amen I was carrying corn off cliffs back up cliffs hiking killing myself why because I love it amen and if you love something enough you'll sacrifice for it amen some of us we've got in tried Doug I sat in the back seat of your truck for 24 hours felt like 24 days to go to Kansas that's a long ways would I do that this morning if God said there's a lost man that's up there in Kansas that's waiting this morning and if somebody would take him the gospel of Jesus Christ, would I be willing to get in my truck, Alan, and head, amen, head that way and not be reserved about it or not make excuse? or uh, See, honey, I can't kill a deer with my cell phone. I, I can't call it in and say, uh, would you like to get saved? And sometimes it only works like James says when you put your hands on it, amen. This morning when I was praying, a lot of times I turned my hands up like this, James, but this morning I turned them like this and I said God come down the back of my hand and come out the front of it whatever I lay my hands on have it anointed with the power of God the, mm, hallelujah the Holy Ghost of God that's what I want coming out of my hands I want these to be living sacrifices for God if you love something enough I mean now look at the time for a glorified goat that nobody cares about Doug look at the sacrifice but we love it is there anything wrong with it? no but how much more? And uh, let me tell you this. We got up there in Kansas and Doug sung a song. And Justin was in a little old, uh, it looked like an army barracks or something. And I preached about what, Doug, 15 minutes. And there's a little guy come up to me and he said, I'm dying of cancer. He said, and we come out here. He said, and I need to be saved. And that night up there on that deer hunt, right in that place, that guy stepped outside, me and him, and he prayed for God to save him. Hey Amen. That's worth 24 hours. I told Doug, I said, I won't go back for the biggest deer in Kansas. Because it killed me, but for one soul. Amen. Would you be willing to go? Would you be willing to sacrifice? Honey, if you love it enough, if you aspire for it enough, Alan, if it's, if it's your dream, if it's something that when you lay down at night, you're so excited you can't go to sleep, and before the alarm clock comes on, your eyes wake up, and you're already drinking coffee and anticipating the day. When's the last time we sacrificed for somebody or a soul that much? When's the last time we took off work? Brown, when's the last time that we went out of our way to do that? When's the last time that no matter what got in our way, we pressed on to get to it? Amen. Am I right about it? Any deer hunter in here, wave your hand if you know what I'm talking about. Harley will do whatever it takes. Whatever it takes to get to that one 30 seconds of fun. 
But we're talking about something that will last up for eternity. On and on and on. If anybody in here is part of a marriage or a happy home, does it not take sacrifice? Miss Reba, how, how long have you and Sid been married? How, 56 years. How many sacrifices have you made because of Sid? A lot. And, and believe it or not, Sid's had to make sacrifice. Miss Reba seems perfect almost to me. But there's been things that's bothered Sid that's got on Sid's nerves and he said she's not perfect but I'm going to sacrifice because I love her so much that it's worth it. That's what it's all about, Alan. Sacrifice. Giving what I don't want to give. Giving, Brown, when it, it don't seem fun to give. When, when the rubber meets the road and the tough, it gets tough, Alan. That's when you sacrifice. You don't sacrifice in good times. You sacrifice when it's hard. Sacrifice is a real thing. And he's Paul saying, I'm begging you for Him. I'm begging you, brethren. I'm begging you, church, cornerstone. I'm begging you this morning. Sacrifice just a little bit. Living. Hallelujah. Are we alright this morning? Your bodies is a living sacrifice. Holy. How, we, how, can, Doug, how in the world can this flesh... When Tanner was talking this morning, he said, is there anybody in here, Matt, that can go one day without sinning? I can. Do you see Tanner? He went... <laughs> He's like, I want to smile, but I can't even smile at that. And you're right. I can go without sinning here. I might even go without sinning here. I can go without these taking me to sin. But see, there's something right here that rests between my ears. And when I've done my best all day, Doug, and even when I'm in prayer, even when I'm in the best spiritual shape I've ever been, there'll be something come through my mind. Amen. And all of a sudden, I've sinned with my mind. I, I, I've not touched it. I've not done it. Doug, but I, that's how unholy and unpure that I am. The only way, the only way, Amanda, the only way that you can live a sinless life is through the blood of Jesus through the Holy Ghost that's inside of you. Are you still going to think it? Sure. Are you going to mess up? Sure. That's what the blood of Jesus is for. Holy. Holy. Holy is an effort. It takes effort. It takes work. Tanner, you thought I was going to say I could do it, didn't you? I can't. But I can try. And here's the difference in the Holy Ghost, what He'll do. When it does come through my mind, and I have the opportunity to put these to it or let these take me to it or let it come out of my mouth, the Holy Ghost can stop and run prevention. He can say, no, don't go any farther with this. A lot of times, He runs damage control. That's holy. That's holy. So for you that says this morning, I can't be holy, preacher. I can't be holy. You can be holy, but it takes the Holy Ghost inside of you to do it. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Well, I need you. Thank you. <laughs> Listen. Holy and acceptable. Holiness is the only thing that God will accept. Tanner was all over this morning. Preached a lot of my message. Holy. The only thing God can accept is Jesus. And the only way He can accept us, Kevin, is through Jesus and through His blood. That intercession, Doug, it makes us acceptable. His holiness is the only way we can be acceptable. Other than that, no matter how hard I try, no matter how much successful I am, I'm unacceptable to God. I like what Tanner said this morning. If you didn't hear him, David, he said, if my finger, my finger, my fleshly finger were to touch the gate of heaven, it would corrupt all of heaven. And Brian, how true that is. But when I do step in, <laughs> uncorruptible, when, when I do step in, it won't be this old body. I'm going to step in brand new. I'm going to step in with, with the same love and the same, I, I'll, I'll have a body like Jesus. Then I'll be alright. And it'll still be only because of Him. Did you know that? How many of you are alright this morning? All right, Kentucky Fried Chicken's waiting on you here in about 15 minutes. <laughs> Unto God, which is your reasonable service. Reasonable, fair, 
The only way it's reasonable, Bill, is if we do it through the love of Jesus and the cross. That's the only thing that's reasonable for God. Tanner, he could have looked all over heaven. He couldn't find an angel could do it. He's looked all the way through the beginning of time from Adam to the last man that dies. There's never been a man could do it. So the only thing that was reasonable in heaven, there was one reasonable answer. That was Jesus and the cross. Amen? Amen? That's the only thing that's reasonable. Now listen to me this morning. We'll go home right now. And be not conformed to this world. Listen to the definition. Conform to comply with standards and rules. Some rules we have to follow. The, the Bible even says for us to respect and honor our leaders. And there's rules for a reason. But here's one thing that you cannot compromise is your standards. Did you hear me this morning? To live holy, brother, to live right, to live pure, to live like you're supposed to, if your standards ever start to fall, all of a sudden you become unacceptable to God. You work up at Appalachian State, you and Joe, how much is acceptable to God up there? And a lot of those kids come out of good godly homes. A lot of them come out of families that's prayed every day. And you know what happened when they got there? Their standards... Not all of them, Connor, but the 95 to, well, 98%, I bet you, their standards start doing this. A little at a time, uh, one thought at a time, one, one drink at a time, one just being the driver at a time, one day at a time, their standards begin to lower and begin to lower and begin to lower. Alan, and all of a sudden, they find themselves sucked into a pit, and it's unacceptable for God because you're a child of God. It's unacceptable. It's not holy. And God hates it. He hates, the, the wages of sin are death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. God hates sin. He hates to see His people in sin. How many of your parents have saw one of your children in sin before? Doug, how does it feel? It feels terrible. It hurts. Don't be conformed. To be conformed means that just in your changing your standards to their standards, which feels good, gets you a pat on the back, and everybody says it's all right. Don't worry about it. It's a lie. You go by the word. You go by what this three-year-old girl was sitting. I like what she said. She looked through the Bible. She looked through the Bible, and she said, "I'm gonna go get mine." I said, "You can use mine if you want to." She said, "No, nah, I got mine." <laughs> Hallelujah. She said, "You got two of them." I said, "Yep, one for each hand." Hallelujah. Listen. Don't be conformed. But listen to this. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. How many of you watch Transformers? We love it, don't we? You watch it, Kevin? All them little Transformers changing. There'll be one thing and all of a sudden... Doug, they transform into something to, totally did. Let me read you the, oh, the definition. Listen. Listen. Transform to make a thorough or dramatic change in form, appearance, or character. Let me read it again. <laughs> to make a thorough or dramatic change in form, appearance, or character. How many of you have had that happen since you got saved? I look different, I feel different, I act different, I talk different. I mean, I changed. And we're like a bunch of little transformers around here. When you change, Bill, you go from that old person that was in whatever they were in, and you become a brand new creature in Christ. All the old has passed away. Behold, all things become new. That's the word. We transform, we change all of a sudden. But I thought about it this morning, Alan, and I was imagining Cornerstone sitting up here on this hill. Just a little group of about 190, 200 people, Callie, sitting here this morning, a bunch of little transformers. But when we come together, and this singing, and in this altar, Denise, we all come together. I mean, we make, we make a big old transformer. Uh, we, we make the top of the line. And I could just imagine this church rising up, Alan, and all of us coming and transforming together into something that can change the world. That's the transformation that we need. God's not looking for a dead sacrifice. 
It's not that hard if you love it. I don't have to say, let me find a dedicated, dedicated hunter here. I don't have to say, Doug, please go hunting again this year. <laughs> Doug, I'll, I'll buy you gas and I'll, I'll buy you some new arrows and broadheads if you'll just go to Ohio one more time. Or, Kevin, I don't, I don't have to say, Kevin, please race again next year. I don't have to say that. I don't have to find people that love stuff. I don't have to say, Lester, would you please go watch Ken play volleyball next year? Would you please go watch Hunter play baseball next year? I don't have to say that. I don't have to beg you. And Matt, I don't have to say, please take Maddie to ball practice. Please spend time with Bubba. I don't have to say that. Why? Because you love it. You're passionate about it and you're willing to sacrifice whatever it takes, however it takes it to do whatever you love. If you're passionate about it, you will do it. Hardly you'll make time, you'll spend time, and you'll do it. And once you start doing it, you get in a one bitch, you get in a one track mind, right? You get in that mind state that come hell or high water, wind, rain, sleet, snow, or hell, I'm going. Oh, yeah, I've said outside, froze to death. Hoping a, a deer would walk by because that's what I wanted. And when I sat there, Doug, I, everybody does it. Justin, you do it. I'd picture it coming. <laughs> oh, yeah. Every time. Then when it didn't, I'd sigh and picture it again. And make myself stay. No matter, what, no matter how bad I want to leave. Listen, Connor, I'd feel guilty. If I leave, you know why I don't leave? I'm a, mm, listen, you know why I don't, you know what drives me to stay, Matt, 30 more minutes, sit as long as I can stand it, James didn't stay another hour, you know what drives me to do that? God, I'm afraid I'll miss something. What if you felt like that on Sundays and Wednesdays? I better not, I, I, I want to stay home, but I'm afraid I'll miss something. What if we loved God like we love God? Whatever we're passionate about here. Thank God for stuff we can love and be passionate about and spend time doing. Anything you love takes sacrifice. Right, Alan? It ain't always fun. Easy. But there's a reward in the end that you're wanting. Honey, there's a reward in the end of this thing for the ones that's willing to sacrifice and transform. Transform for God. Are you all right this morning? How do we do that? Listen, by the renewing of your mind. Where's the battlefield? Mind rests right between my ears, Dan. If I got a battlefield, if anything fights Eric Prophet, if anything brings him down, it's right here. You know what to convince me that, to do something else right here? I'll sit and I'll think and I'll think and I'll think and I'll think and I'll have myself beat down so low I can't do nothing. Ready to give up? We need a renewed mind. Renewed is the mind of Christ, right? I'm done right here. How many of you ready to go home? Listen. I know, me too. I'm going deer hunting. Listen. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is good. Say good. good. And acceptable. And listen to this word, and perfect. There's two words here that we can be. We can be good. That means, Renee, we're simply doing the best we can. We can be good. How many of you can be good? How many of you, Connor, did your mom ever say you'd be good today? <laughs> be good. You can go, but be good. You can be good. Brown can be acceptable. There's no doubt some of the classes that you have back here that I feel like God says I accept that. What a blessing. Tanner, what a blessing when you walk down from behind that pulpit. What a place. And God says, I accept that. What a blessing, Alan, when God says, I, I accept your effort. But there's a word here that we cannot be, and it's called perfect. Hear me this morning, Cornerstone, all you little transformers. Hear me. Bill, you're not going to be perfect. But if you try, there's something called the will of God. See, God knows the past, the present, the present, and the future. 
He's got a perfect will for your life, Brown. He's got a perfect will for my life. Doug, I've been places and I've done stuff and I knew that I was not in the perfect will of God. Justin, you ever been there? But I've stood up and I've made that walk from right here to right here with my Bible under my arm. And I've grabbed hold of this pulpit. And I've felt the perfect presence of God, Alan. And I've felt the perfect will of God. And there's nothing, David, there's nothing like it in your life than to feel the perfect will of God. And it, Denise, you know what it takes? Sacrifice. Sacrifice is not fun. It's not easy. But it's acceptable. This morning in Cornerstone, some of us will be tempted to conform. Some of you, you're going to be tempted to conform somewhere. Brown, it might be at work. You've got to transform right before them. That means you're just old Jason Brown, but when it comes time, you transform into that power of God. How many transformers we got in here? A few. Obvious. Shame to admit it. But it takes renewing of your mind. That's where you get it right here. And right here. See, Brown's got one. Just like a three-year-old girl. And you know what? Works the same for a 35-year-old as it does a three-year-old. Even better because you can read it. Bill, use that. Use this. Use the renewing of your mind. Church, if we don't, we'll end up conforming. I'm done. Let me read that last verse and I'm done right here. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is good and acceptable. And the perfect will of God. How many of you want God's perfect will in your life? Isaiah, when he saw the Lord high and lifted up, I thought Tanner was going there for sure this morning. He saw the Lord and saw all the angels and saw everything around him flying around saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. And before Isaiah stood up, Shannon said, let me do something, let me do something, let me do something. He said, I'm undone. And I'm a man of unclean lips. And the Bible said he laid, laid it right there at the altar, the brazen altar on the coals. And he got right with God. And then the, the Bible said that, he, that the Lord said this, who shall go for us? The Father, Son, the Holy Ghost. He said, who will go? And Isaiah could say this because he got right. He said, send me. He transformed right there. He said, send me, I'll go. Can you say that this morning? I'm done. How many of you can say that? Don't raise your hand. How many of you can say, Lord, send me? Send me, I'm ready this morning. I'm ready to transform right before the world's eyes. Stand to your feet, I'm done. Denise, come on with the song. Lord, we love you this morning. Thank you for your anointing. God, and how good you are. And Lord, we do pray, God, that... Uh, through the power of Your Spirit, Lord, that You would renew minds and change minds and Lord, just uh, work in our church this morning, Lord, that we would transform and never conform. God, I pray and God, lift up a standard for our church that we could not be conformed to this world but will always be transforming for You. Lord, we love You and thank You in Jesus' name. Amen. If you need to use the altar, come on.